Good morning. Thank you for joining us this morning with Vibe Houston. My name is Josio Caraballo. I'm one of the lead pastors here at Vibe Houston, and we're excited that you're here this morning with us. At this time, I invite you to like this video, okay? Do it. All right. How about sharing it? That's the next step, okay? Share it. Do it. Okay. So we want you to um, share this video with the others on your page, on your Instagram. You know, share what God is going to do this morning with this service. I'm an, like I said, I'm Rocio. I am the wife of George, our pastor. He took a little break today and asked me to come and share with you what God has been placing in my heart to um, share this this week. So I'm excited. Um, also, have, we, I am the mom of Osito and Cafecito. You might not see them, but they're all over stage right now walking around you know yes they're they're, they're those those little um we call them um pks puppy kids um they are just running around right now um trying to um, um you know distract me or trying to get my attention but i'm like no this is not the time for that so um but we're excited to have you thank you so much again um at this time i love the worship song that we just ended you know because it is what i want to share about today god's faithfulness i know that um these past two months have been crazy right the, with everything that's going on the coronavirus rona is just changing things up is messing up our plans but god is faithful he is faithful that's the title of this to this morning's message um i um i'm excited because these last seven months i can attest i can witness and say that god has been faithful with vive houston faithful with with the vision of what vive houston is my husband and i this is a two-year in the making process you know for this church to happen we um you know we weren't anticipating that our first year we would have a quarantine we weren't a, a, you know anticipating that for two months we would switch from our regular routine being at the y and coming and coming back to our home and having service here but i'm glad that we serve a god that is faithful and has been with us every step of the way and i want to remind you this morning of that you know um um, throughout the seven months, we've seen God been faithful not only in bringing people in, we we are some of the people that we have are the best people that we could ever have. You know, I, I want to thank our, our sound people, our worship team, our kids ministries, because God has been faithful in bringing them into our life and being part of Vive Houston. I usually work um, with the Vive kids. I'm there. I miss my little Vive kids. Shout out Vive kids. Y'all see me? But um, um, but I'm I. That's where I'm at, and um, this morning I'm glad to be here on stage in front of everyone, just ready to share what God, how God's faithfulness can be the same in your life, or continue to be the same in your life, because because if you're breathing this morning, that's the faithfulness of God in your life. So at this time, I want you to open up your Bible. We're going to go to the first book of the Bible in the Old Testament. You don't have to go far. It's with the, I'm going to be reading out of the New Living Translation. So if you, um, you know, you might have the NIV or you might have another version. So it might sound a little different, but don't worry. It's still the same. Sometime later, the Lord spoke to Abram in a vision and said to him, Do not be afraid, Abram, for I will protect you and your reward will be great. But Abram replied, Oh, sovereign Lord, what good are all your blessings when I don't even have a son? Since you've given me no children, Elisar of Damascus, a servant in my household, will inherit my, all my wealth. You have given me no descendants of my own, so one of my servants will be my heir. Then the Lord said to him, No, your servant will not be your heir, for you will have a son of your own who will be your heir. Verse 5, Then the Lord took Abram outside and said to him, Look up at the sky and count the stars if you can. That's how many descendants you will have. And Abram believed the Lord, and the Lord counted him righteous because of his faith. Lord, I thank you, my God. I thank you because this morning, dear Lord, you've given us a new day of life, Lord. You've given us health, 
So, Lord, you've given us the opportunity, God, to just hear your word, your message, to Lord. May we be quick to listen, to Lord. To Lord, may we be quick, to Lord, to believe, to Lord, and what you have to say in our lives this morning. I thank you, God. In your name we pray. Amen. So, like I was saying earlier, these past seven months has have been uh, phenomenal, have been amazing, have been, you know, just a, a time of, you know, getting to know God in a whole nother level. Like, you know, doing youth ministry is cool. We've done it for so many years. But now moving into the role of, of lead pastors, senior pastors has been, you know, a little different because we're the ones in charge now. You know, if things happen, if they don't happen, guess what? It's our responsibility. But in all of that, we have seen God's hand. We have seen God's faithfulness in our lives. And here we look at, at Abram. We look at this man of God that um, we, we go back a couple of chapters in chapter 12, the initial calling of God over Abram's life. And one of the things to look at is that, man, Abram was a, a listener. How many listeners do we have? If you say, um, you, can, you can say, you can comment there, say amen. You can put a little hand. You know, you can do your little avatar uh, who has a little avatar yes you do okay so that's a new thing right now on facebook the avatar um but um you know um, there are people that are listeners people that are quick to listen and slow to speak you know and, and we need those people in our lives right how many of you have a friend that you can go to and you know that person's gonna listen to you you know that person is gonna not gonna interrupt you not gonna get distracted not gonna be on, on Facebook or Instagram or TikTok or just or cutting you off but you know you can go to that person because they'll hear you out so Abraham was a listener I can I see it right here in the scripture in Genesis, especially when the Lord spoke. He was quick to listen. Are you quick to listen to what God has to say in your life? That's the first point I want to share with you. Listen. You know, we got to position ourselves ready to listen to what God wants to do in our life. You know, God is ready to speak. God is ready to reveal things to us, but are we quick to listen? Are we, a, are we, in, a, are we in chaos? Are we in a room where there is noise happening, where our thoughts are getting to us, when distractions are, are getting our attention, but are we quick to listen to the voice of God? Are we quick to say, man, Rocio, here am I. I'm ready to speak. Man, in the Old Testament, you knew when God is ready to speak because the scripture says, the Lord spoke or the Lord says, thus says the Lord. Because when that would happen, we knew God was, was, was up to something. We knew that God was going to give a special revelation. We knew that God was about to perform a miraculous miracle we knew that God was gonna be faithful to us this morning God is wanting to speak to you are you are you going to listen are you going to listen to the voice of God or are you going to listen to what the news has to say are you going to listen to what Facebook has to say are you going to listen to what TikTok has to say are you going to listen to the government are you what are you going to listen to but are you going to listen to the voice of God we see that Abram in several occasions, God speaks to him. And when he speaks to him, he's affirming what he wants to do in his life. He's telling him, I'm going to bless you. You are going to be blessed. I'm going to provide for you. I'm going to provide a son for you. And this is what we read in chapter 15, that God is reaffirming what he's going to do. In chapter 12, God was telling him, you're going to be the, you're, you're going to be um, blessed for generations to come your descendants are going to be blessed here we hear um we we see here in chapter 15 that God is speaking to him and telling him once again you're going to have a son you know so um, right here we hear um in chapter um 15 Abram was 75 years old you know, for a man, yes, he. Can, I'm sure he can still, you know, produce a, a, a child. But for a woman, his wife, Sarah, she was as well older. I don't know if that's, you know, I don't know, that could be, but now, could, you know, it would be a little hard to, to, be, to make that possible. 
But we see here that God is again reaffirming that. And it's like, I will do that in your life. See, when we need to be reaffirmed, when we need to be spoken to, God will do it. But are you ready? Have you put yourself in that situation, in that, in that, that position to listen to what God has to say? Sometimes we allow other people to pour in. We listen to other people and we say, yeah, you're right. You know, I shouldn't, I shouldn't go to... I shouldn't go to Bible school, or I shouldn't move over here, or I shouldn't go on that missions trip, or I shouldn't join kids' ministries because I'm not good with kids. No, they're annoying. You know what? I, what am I going to do with kids, you know, in kids' ministry? Or what am I going to do, you know, helping in this area or in that area? But no, but what if God is saying, no, in there, I'm going to fulfill a promise in there. I'm going to reveal a ministry in there. I'm going to reveal a calling or that's just a stepping stone to where I have to take you to the next level. Listening. We have to listen, church. We have to listen to the voice of God. We have, we need the voice of God to, to, to direct us where we need to go. We need the voice of God to convict us. We need the voice of God to remind us or to speak promises and miracles into our life. May we be quick to listen. Not only did, did Abram listen, but he believed. He believed what God has was speaking into his life. Sometimes we, you know, man, I, you know, sometimes God wants to tell us, oh, I'll take you from nation to nation. Well, I'll take you to places you could never imagine before. And sometimes we're like, nah, God, I'm just, you know, I'm just a simple girl from Tyler, Texas. Some people don't even know where Tyler's at. You know, where are you, why, why would you take me somewhere? I don't think you're capable of doing it. Sometimes we put a limit to God, what God wants to do in our lives. You know, if I would have done that, I wouldn't have gone to the places where he has taken me. I wouldn't be in the ministries that God had, had put me in. If I would have listened, if I would have doubted what God was going to do in my life. Believe, believe that God is able to take you out of this quarantine on top. I know these last two months have been crazy. Man, this Rona ain't no joke. You know, for the last two months, we've been, oh man. And maybe you've been getting to know your spouse a little too much. And you're like, I need a break. It's, this is it. I don't know. I don't know. You know, we're, we're about to, you know, kick each other out of the house, the room, you know, you know, live, working from home has been an experience like no other. Right, guys? Uh, yeah, I, uh, for, I can't do work from home. I've tried it. That's it. That's it. My job requires me to be, to see, you know, people. To, I need to see people. But thank God I have a job. You know what? Thank God that I have a job. You know, at the end of the day, I'm glad that I have that. You know, but believing what God is able to do, you know, and through this, oh, we still have to hold on to the promises that God has spoken over our lives. You know, the promises that he's only spoken to you. Yes, there's a promise that he's always going to be there for you. He's always going to provide for you. But then there's those promises that he has specifically spoken into your life. Man, some of you are still wondering, where, where's that career going to come? Or, man, you, you might have, like, man, you had your career, and, you know, because of what's going on, this, this un, un, undisturbed, you know, this chaos. Maybe you, you've lost your career, and you're, you're just like, man, God, I finally made it, and look what happened. But may we believe that God is still in control. May we believe that God is still doing and working on our behalf. That there's still greater things to come. That this Rona does not have control of us. That this Rona does not dictate who we are. But that we know that God of the greatest high, God of Abram, is able to do more than enough for our lives. I'm believing that there's promises that I'm still waiting for. Man, what God, when God spoke to Abram, he was 75 years old. 
he was 75 years old, an older man, you know, probably ready and this, and this point in age, you're retired, you're ready to go, man, where, where can I go travel or, you know, do I need to join the golf course? Do I, what do I need to do? Do I need to go? For me, it'd probably be like, let me, let me finally get to, get to know how to sew, you know, crocheted or something. But at 75 years old, that, that's, I'm just like, I'm, I ain't got time for kids. I ain't got time for that. You know, I, that, that ain't me no more. I don't have the energy. But he believe, chose to believe God. He didn't put any exemptions. He didn't say no, this, that. But he chose to believe. Even, even in the next chapter, we read that Sarah stuck her little hand, you know, kind of went, no, I'm going I'm to take, take action. I'm going to do my own thing, you know. God is taking too long. He is taking too long. On my timeline, he's, he's not there yet. So she came in and did what she wanted to, you know, and made it happen. You know, he, said, he gave, um, you know, Abram, here's my servant. You take her, you know, get her pregnant. And that's how, that's how God's going to fulfill his promise in our lives. And sometimes we want to make those promises come a reality at that time. But that is, it's not on our time. It's on God's time. Because when it's on God's time, he aligns things. He puts things right like they should. And that's what God, I want to tell you that, man, believe God. Believe God in his timing. Believe that in his timing, it will come to action. It will come to happen. That through it, through that journey, God is still going to be with you. He's still going to be faithful. Even when you feel like he's totally silent. In the silence, we rely on the power of this Holy Spirit. And the power of the Holy Spirit that reaffirms our faith. That keeps encouraging, empowering us to believe. And number three, be faithful. We saw Abram faithful, even though he took action, even though he, you know, he allowed Sarah to do, to come and, and make, you know, her own thing happen. Through it all, God was faithful. He was like, he didn't say, okay, I'm not going to make it happen no more. No. God was still there with him. God was still there with him reaffirming what he was going to do in the life of, of Abram and Sarah. Because we look at, the, at God's faithfulness. We look at God and Abram's faithfulness and all. We see that it took 25 years for that promise to come and to uh, become a reality. 25 years. Some of us, we're waiting on something that God has spoken to us Maybe it was last week. Maybe it was a year ago. And we're, we're becoming so impatient. We're like, God, I need it to happen now. I need it to happen now. But what if God is like, no. I, I, I need you to wait. I need you to wait. Please, please wait. I know what I spoke. I know what I said. I know what I declared over your life. But I just need you to hold on just a moment, Okay. Because I'm still working. I'm, it's still going to happen. But I just need you to hold on. Today, church, I encourage you to keep holding. Some of you are praying for salvation of loved ones. Some of you are praying for miracles. Some of you are praying for healing. Some of you are praying for children. Some of you are praying for a home, a career, your finances. This morning, I want to tell you, keep holding on. Remain faithful to what God has spoken to you, what God wants to do in your life. He has not forgotten. Our God is not a forgetful God. Our God is a faithful God. And he wants, he is going to make it happen. You just need to continue to be. God, I know that it's been five years. I know that it's been 10 years, Lord. But you have spoken over me. You have declared this over my life. And I will continue to be faithful. I will continue to hold on. 
and there's promises that I'm believing for. And sometimes I do get impatient. Sometimes I do say, oh, but when is it going to happen? God, I, you know, I'm, I'm this age already. I should be doing this, 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 this. Don't worry, it's going to happen. Just remain faithful. Just hold on. He is faithful, church. Can I get an amen? Can I say, can I get a little clap? Can I get a, a, um, a, a shout? Can I, can I say yes, yes, right there in the comments? God is faithful. He is faithful. There's a purpose in your life. If God has called you to do something, he's going to make it happen. Just remain faithful. He is faithful. If there's, if there's something that you need to, if of all, of, all of this that I've said this morning, you want to take, he is faithful. You know, if you ever need someone to pray for you, we're here. We're here to support you. We're here to encourage you. We're here to remind you that he is faithful talk this morning about you know uh, about listening be in position to listen to what God wants to say make sure you're positioned to listen even in the silence even when you don't hear nothing the presence of the Lord is still there it's with you second we we heard about believing believing in God believing in what he's saying Believing if there's things that need to change in your life, that you need to change those because God is speaking. If there's things that God is declaring over your, over your life, believe that he's able to do that. Lastly, be faithful. Be faithful in what God wants to do in your life. Be faithful in believing what God is going to do. Faithful. If there's anything that's going on in your life, I'm going to be faithful. If everyone forsakes you, if you lose your job, if you lose your dream home, if you lose your family, I'm still going to be faithful because my God is worthy of it. And I know that if I remain faithful, he's going to be faithful to me. At this time, you know, I invite you, if you, if you want to know our, this God that loves us, that cares for us, that is ready to pour out blessings and promises, is able to strengthen us, increase our faith, I invite you to comment there, and we'll get with you. We'll, we'll call you. We'll message you. We'll pray over you to invite you to be part of our community, to be part of this, of, this, of this movement that believes in who a God that is loving and caring and faithful to his children. You know, we want you to be a part of it. We don't want you to go throughout life living alone, but we want you to be in fellowship with us and also most importantly, to come in relationship with Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Also, if you need prayer, please comment. We're here. We're here to pray. We're here to believe with you God's faithfulness over your life. We're here to believe for healings. We're here to believe for miraculous things to happen, for new jobs, for finances, for a house, for your spouse. Whatever it is, we're here to believe with you. Lord God, I thank you for this morning. I thank you, God, for the for the for your children that listen this morning, God. May they be encouraged. May, may they be encouraged to continue to be faithful to you because you're faithful. Dear Lord, you're a faithful God. You don't lose the ear. You don't turn ear from us, dear Lord, when we are in need, my God. May they be reminded, dear Lord, out of all of this that you are faithful and you will complete what you've spoken over their lives, dear Lord. Those promises, those miracles, God, are just waiting to happen in your name, my Lord.
I thank you, God. I thank you because there's healings to the Lord, new jobs, God, homes, marriages are going to be restored to the Lord. To the Lord, God, you're just going to do amazing things, my Lord. And I thank you, God. I thank you for today. In your name we pray. Amen.